Welcome to the Fall Market. I'm Tom Conley, President and CEO of the High Point Market Authority. We're delighted to bring you this third virtual, virtual session as part of our Fall Market Keynote Series, sponsored by Unify. Before we get started, I'd like to give you a few keynote, a few ha housekeeping notes rather. This session is being recorded and a recording of it will be available afterwards on the High Point Market YouTube channel. This session provides one CEU. For those of you watching this session live, attendee information will be provided to IDCEC for credit. If you have questions throughout the discussion, please use the Q&A feature to submit them. We'll have time for a Q&A session towards the end of the hour. Unify Incorporate is a global textile solutions provider and one of the world's leading innovators in manufacturing synthetic and recycled performance cycles. Through Revive, one of Unify's proprietary technologies and the global, global leader in branded recycled performance fibers, Unify has transformed more than 200 billion plastic bottles into recycled fiber for new apparel, footwear, home goods, and other consumer products. You can find Unify's reprieve brand around High Point Market at Culp Fabric, Millican, Valdez Weavers, Lazy Boy, Sunpan, Violino, Lane Home, and Kuka Home. To share more, I'd like to welcome Jay Herswig, Senior Vice President of Commercialization for Unify to share a few words with us. Jay? Good afternoon. I'm Jay Hertwig, Senior Vice President of Commercialization with Unify. We are excited to be sponsoring the keynote presentation at Furniture Market, Sustainability in Textiles. Unify is a global textile solutions provider and one of the world's leading innovators in manufacturing synthetic and recycled performance fibers. Nearly 50 years ago, we started making fibers with, with what was then a new material called polyester. We've changed and grown over the years, and so has polyester. Our drive is to be tech-savvy innovators to serve our customers with the most imaginative solutions and products we can offer. Better than anyone, we know from experience, true innovation starts in the fiber. Unify is headquartered in Greensboro, North Carolina, with manufacturing and sales locations in North Carolina, Central America, South America, Europe, Turkey, and Asia. Today, we employ more than 2,600 employees around the world with annual sales revenue of more than $600 million. This photo was taken outside of Unify's manufacturing facility and recycling center in Yakinville, North Carolina. At Unify, innovation is an attitude, not a department. Our approach brings together diverse teams of experts from all over the world to investigate, collaborate, and innovate. After all, the textile industry is one of the world's most technologically advanced businesses in the world. Our vision is to make everyday life better by transforming the world's products through sustainable innovation, all for the good of tomorrow. I'm proud to introduce to you now Unify's CEO, Eddie Engel. Eddie has more than 30 years of experience with Unify. He began his career at Unify's operations in Letterkenny, Ireland in 1986 and moved to Winston-Salem in 1991 to work for Unify in the U.S. until 2018. Throughout the years, Eddie has held numerous leadership positions, including Vice President of Supply Chain and Global Corporate Sustainability Officer. Before returning to the company this year, Eddie served as CEO of Endorama Ventures Recycling Business. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you today and introduce you to Eddie Engel. Thanks, Jay, for the introduction. And uh, thanks, everyone, for getting on this uh, seminar today. It's, it's a real treat to be able to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, as are all of my colleagues in Unify, and that is sustainability and textiles. They go hand in hand. And in fact, we're seeing many companies in your industry specifically making a change in the way that it views the manufacturing of furniture and fabrics going into the home. This sea change has been building for quite some time and it's driven by the consumers, both millennials and Gen, Gen Zs. 
And there's a growing understanding that the conversation around climate change, environmental damage and pollution centers around carbon and, and carbon dioxide. In many cases, the public sees plastic as the cause of the problem. We are constantly hearing about plastic in our oceans, plastic in our landfills, plastic killing our environment. Yet there is a common understanding by most that without plastic, as these products show in the slide, our lives would be much more difficult than it is today. And certainly the environment would be in much worse shape as the alternatives to plastic, such as glass and the, the carbon footprint that's created when glass is reduced, um, they have a terrible carbon footprint. In reality, not all plastics are the same. And when the plastic products are designed to be recycled and in turn are recycled, the carbon footprint of the product is diminished greatly. So to help you perhaps understand how sustainability can be accelerated in your industry, this presentation will, will be around the subject of one particular plastics, which is polyethylene terephthalate, polyester, or thankfully shortened to PET. What makes a drink bottle unique is what it's made from. It's a light and strong plastic material called PET that's in high demand simply because it's 100% recyclable and can be easily remade into new things. When plastic bottles are recycled, they can be used to make new bottles or other consumer goods like apparel, footwear, automotive interior, furniture, home goods, and many, many more things. PET's technical properties make it unique among the other plastics because it can be recycled and used again and again, remade as it were into something new and not ended up in our landfills, oceans, rivers, and beaches. Now globally, PET is the easiest to recycle and most recycled and the most accessible plastic. In 2019, the European Parliament passed the Single Use Plastic Directive, which will take their PET packaging recycling rates from 60% today to 75% with the expectations that by 2029, it will reach 90%. Asia's recycling rates of PET are already at 90% as there's huge value to the informal collectors, the pickers that prevent most of the PET bottles from reaching landfills or the oceans. And while the US has not gained traction in high recycling rates, today we're still only around 29% or less, states that do have recycling legislation like California or states with deposit return systems, they're doing much better at about 56, 60%. The bottom line is that in the US, there's a huge opportunity to recycle 70% or more of the PET that is currently being discarded. And this future supply can certainly go in to textiles for your industry. So let me give you a little bit of a history lesson. The demand for sustainability in the textile industry began with the apparel sector. Back in the early 2000s, Unify created Reprieve as a way to recycle our own textile waste and minimize our carbon footprint. Then we realized we could have an even bigger impact if we also recycled PET bottles a resource that we all know gets too often tossed into landfill by the billions and we could turn them into yarn. So Reprieve started out small, began with the adoption by three brands, one of which provides materials to your industry, Valdez Weavers. And today, more than 700 brands use Reprieve, many of which you see here, and, and that number continues to grow almost daily. Why the initial drive for sustainability came from the apparel industry, what we're seeing today is a move throughout all industries to become more sustainable. So take a look at the automotive industry, for example. Nearly every car maker is making some version of either a hybrid car or fully electric car. And what are they doing when they are building these cars? They're incorporating sustainability throughout the entire car. For example, in the underbody shields, truck linings, and fabrics that they choose to go into the interior of the car. They're all looking at sustainable options so that they can tell an eco-friendly story. And in many cases, by choosing a sustainable alternative, they can reduce the weight of the car, which in turn increases the range. Now let's take a look at your industry. The furniture industry creates a large amount of waste each year. 
In fact, Americans throw away 12 million tons of furniture and 9 million tons of that ends up in landfills. We're really seeing now that because of COVID, as you'll see in our next slide, much of the weight of the furniture is textiles and fiber film that with the right design considerations up front could be recycled. As we all know, much of the US has shifted to working from home and remote learning as offices and schools closed to try to help curb the spread of COVID-19. And that in turn, I hope you're seeing in your own business is driving furniture sales. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, only 7% of Americans work from home. Now, 62% of Americans say they're working from home. And some consumers are creating in their own home, virtual home offices. Others are using the extra time that they're spending at home to decorate and get new furniture because they're tired of looking at the same furniture all the time. The bottom line is our homes are not just living spaces anymore. You know this better than anybody else. They're living and working spaces. So we're starting to see more and more Americans purchasing furniture. According to a recent survey, prior to COVID, just 32% of respondents had a permanent home workspace. This means that seven out of 10 WFH workers had to figure out from the home part. While we thought working from home was gonna be temporary seven months ago, it is now the new normal. And take a look at these major companies, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, they have all said they are going to extend their work from home policy even when the pandemic ends. Coronavirus has changed the way we work for the foreseeable future. And it's a trend that favors the home furnishing industry. Now one company not in your sector that is doing successfully is Dell, which uses a closed loop supply chain. The company recycles millions of pounds of closed loop plastics to make new parts for the computers and monitors each year. And here's how it works. People recycle their old computers and monitors and afterwards materials are disassembled. The plastics are shredded, melted and then mixed with virgin plastics to make new computers or packaging. In 2017, Dell pioneered the use of ocean bound plastics in their packaging, starting with the packaging trays for the XP13 two in one computer. They have continued to work with suppliers to collect, process, and mix plastics with other recycled materials to create molded trays used for packaging select products. The trays are 25% ocean bound plastic and 75% recycled PET using no virgin materials at all. So as your industry changes, we're starting to see different demands from people within the furniture industry. Everyone always thought when you bought furniture, the first thing you looked at was quality. And that was true, but now the majority of consumers are also looking for furniture that's made sustainably. We looked at this study from the Sustainable Furniture Council, which surveyed homeowners ages 30 to 60 years old with a household income of $50,000 or more. And it found that while quality is still a very high priority, what ranks nearly as high a priority is the environmental footprint of that piece of furniture. They want to ensure that the furniture they're buying is not only of good quality and safe, but it's also environmentally friendly. So what is the industry asking of you? As LEED certified buildings grew in demand, there was pressure put on contract furniture manufacturers to make their products more sustainable, thereby contributing to their LEED certification points. But what about home furniture? It was almost ignored until now. But now we're seeing consumers, particularly those from Gen X or Gen Z categories that are demanding sustainable options. Not only when they go buy apparel, but furniture as well. They are more informed consumers and they're as likely to boycott a brand for being unsustainable as they are to choose more sustainably produced products. From the wood they use for frames to the fabric and finish, consumers are doing their research to ensure what they choose to put in their homes is environmentally friendly. Which leads us to the industry F words. Your mom said are, are okay to use. Well, I'm not expert in woodworking, the textile industry touches the fabric, foam, finish, and filling steps when you make furniture and home textiles. These are all things that you can look at with a new lens of sustainability. 
and all things that are textiles are actively a part of the decision in the process. Earlier, I told you about the more than 700 brands that uses Reprieve. Now I want to tell you a little bit about what Reprieve is. Reprieve is a high quality performance fiber made with recycled materials. It's, it is the earth friendly solution to making consumers favorite brands more environmentally responsible. Reprieve fibers can be enhanced with performance technologies like flame retardants and water repellent capabilities for increased performance and comfort. So how does a water bottle get transformed into Reprieve? Consumers start the process by making the decision to recycle their plastic bottles and throwing them into a recycling container. They are collected and taken to the material recovery facilities we call MRFs in the industry. These bottles are collected from every MRF up and down the East Coast and brought to the Reprieve Bottle Processing Center in Reedsville, North Carolina, where they are sorted, cleaned and chopped into bottle flake. That flake is melted and extruded into Reprieve chip or resin, which is then spun into Reprieve performance recycled yarn. The yarn is then either woven or knit into fabric that goes into items consumers use every day, including, as we talked about earlier, apparel, socks, shoes, home furnishings, and automotive seating. So how long have we been doing this? The answer is since around 2007, and to date, we've transformed more than 20 billion recycled bottles into Reprieve performance fiber. And every little bit counts. Looking ahead, our goal is to recycle 30 billion bottles by 2022. So what does 20 billion bottles actually look like? Well, when you look at the numbers in terms of air, water, and energy, recycling offsets the need to make new bottles and therefore saves these precious natural resources. Recycling 20 billion bottles improves the air quality by eliminating CO2 emissions from the use of more than a million barrels of oil. It provides more than 2 million people their drinking water for one year and generates enough energy to power nearly 200,000 homes for one year. So when you think of these numbers in terms of what you can do, you've got to remember that every step counts. When you're going down the road of sustainability, you have to look at every step, not just the finished product, not just the inputs, not just the fiber that goes into it, but the fabric construction the materials that you use to make it and the fiber fill that is used to fill pillows and cushions. All of these options will help you make a more sustainable product. You also have to look at how you produce these materials. How are you powering these plants that you're working in, transporting the materials used to make the furniture from location, move the, move the furniture from location to location, and even how are you adding color to these products? What are you doing to produce these products? And then you want to look at what is the best way to do this? What's the most efficient way? Looking at furniture design and the ease of deconstruction is something that we talk about because recycling is one thing on the front end. The next big question is how can you and what can you do with that piece of furniture once you're done with it at this end of life? So you want to create something that hopefully can be easily deconstructed so it can then be recycled again. And then you also want to look at the work environment. You know, you're wanting to make sure that the work environment promotes sustainability. What are you doing within your own factory to promote sustainability? How are you talking to your employees about sustainability? What are you doing with your own waste within your factory? Now, I want to show you a video of what I've been talking about. Take a look inside this closed loop process that produces new fabrics from recycling already recycled textile waste.
Now to create Loop to Loop, Unify collaborated with three other companies, Design Techs, Steelcase, and Duval Techs, formerly known as Victor, and said, how can we take the waste that are produced during the manufacturing of wall coverings, and how can we take that waste and divert it from the landfill? And here's how it works. That fabric waste material comes through our facility in North Carolina. We chop that material up and then turn it into solution dyed black yarn that is sent to Duval Tex. Duval Tex then uses that yarn as a weave fabric for design tex, and they then create a completely new fabric and waste material that started from their parent company Steelcase. The result of this project is that we were able to establish a system for capturing and recycling textile waste back into first quality goods. So now let's focus a little bit on where you may see companies that have chosen the sustainable route in your industry. First, we'd like to talk about Culp, who's exhibiting at the show. The company's signature green products is their line of Live Smart Evolve fabrics that are made with Reprieve. Their CEO, Yves Culp, has said that the collection, which combines both sustainability and performance, has been a resounding success. Breathe by Millican is another example, another sustainable fabric product that you'll he see here at the show. This one using Reprieve polyester. In addition to being sustainable, these fabrics are strong and durable, repel everyday stains and are responsibly manufactured. That's one thing we like to tell people, products made with Reprieve provide the same quality and performance characteristics as products made with non-recycled polyester. There is just as soft and comfortable and can be made with the same performance additions, yet have that additional benefit of being made from recycled content. Lane Home Furnishings is another example of a company that has chosen sustainability through its line of eco-friendly mattresses called Lux Evolved by Lane. The collection uses Reprieve and has moisture wicking, adaptive warming and cooling, and water repellent capabilities. Now, I've told you about Culp's line of sustainable fabrics. An example of a brand that's a that's telling a sustainable story is Lazy Boy, who is using Cubs fabrics. And this is a great example of how you can tell your sustainability story to the audience. So Lazy Boy's consumers are demanding it and making it engaging and reliable at the same time. They do a great job taking the sustainable story to the next level by showing the process of the impact recycling and how many bottles go into their sofas and chairs. That helps the consumer make the connection between throwing their plastic bottle in the recycling bin and how it can be transformed into something they use every day. One of our customers that's not presenting at the show today, but has really jumped in with both feet when it comes to sustainability is Lovesack. Their CEO is so committed to this that he actually talks about it in their monthly sales meetings and talks about not just the number of sectionals they've sold, but the number of bottles that they've directed from the landfill. The company is also committed to using 100% recycling materials throughout their entire product line. This is another company that weaves sustainability into the story that they tell consumers by showing them how many bottles are recycled into each piece of furniture they buy. Biolino is another company that is showcasing their products here at market. They've used Culp sustainable fabrics to produce an entire line of eco-friendly furniture. The president of Violino told us their company's priority is to take major care during the sourcing and manufacturing of all their products in an effort to reduce their carbon footprint and be part of the solution, not the problem. When you design for circularity with PET in mind, the result is that a product can be recycled at the end of its life. This requirement is not a matter of if it'll happen, it's a matter of when. Due to continued increased demand from both consumers and government regulations. 
And that's the goal, to be part of the solution for the good of tomorrow. I'd like, you thank, I'd like to thank you all today for your time, as you've hopefully learned about the change we're seeing throughout the furniture industry. I'd also like to thank you for recycling. I know those of you who make that extra step, two or three steps and put your bottle back into the recycling bin, I want you to know that bottle goes somewhere into back into our ecosystem. Sustainability, it's not a request anymore. And it's actually a demand for the consumers who are looking for greener options that help our planet. At Unify, we believe no problem gets solved unless we create a better tomorrow. Thank you. Now, just a quick uh, note, if you're attending the market in person, we want to invite you to stop by our Reprieve mobile tour on West Commerce Street. Inside, you'll have the chance to learn how we're able to transform the bottles you recycle into Reprieve sustainable performance fiber through this interactive experience. But uh, we'll go back to Q&A and Jay, I think you might have some um, questions lined up for us. Yes, Eddie, the first question from the Q&A chat uh, is what makes Reprieve special or different than any other recycled polyester? Well, that's a great question. I think what I would say is uh, the fact that we're traceable and transparent, uh, that, that's the real unique thing. In, in, embedded in every Reprieve fiber, we have our U-Trust uh, process. We have a tracer that allows us to test a fabric or garment and confirm that it is made of Reprieve, thereby making sure the brands uh, don't get into trouble making promises that are not true. So it's that transparency, the traceability, and the the guarantee that it is made of recycled content. We have a third party certification company, SCS, uh, scientific certification uh, process that we use to confirm that. Okay, great. Our second question uh, is, how will the bottling industry's pledge to use more recycled content impact availability for textiles? Well, I think, um, I think it's a great thing that the, the bottle brands um, are now working very hard to increase collection rates, especially in the US. When collection rates increase, it means there's more bottles, there's more supply, and there's more to go around. Um, they're trying to get to, in generally, 25% uh, recycled content, maybe 50% recycled content, depending on the brand. So there will be plenty of bottles left over for our industry to recycle and turn back into great textiles and yarns. All right. Uh, our next question uh, is, what is the future of polyester? Recycled polyester uses raw material based on single in-use plastics, which governments are trying to ban. And where does this fit with biodegradable and circulation? Well, I think, um, you know, Europe's probably ahead of, of the US when it comes to uh, recycled content. And so what Europe's trying to do is not necessarily ban single use plastic, but encourage the use of recycling and recycling products back into either bottles or into other uh, end uses. And we're gonna see this um, more and more. Um, today, there was an article um, in Bloomsburg talking about how China has so much textile waste piling up and they need to do something about it. And the industry is committed to doing what you saw in one of those videos on the loop to loop, taking textile waste and garments and turning them back in uh, as a feedstock. So I don't think long term we'll be relying just on bottles as a feedstock for our for our yarns, for our reprieve yarns. Go back to the second part of the question, which is about the biodegradability. Um, you know, I think that's a, a nascent uh, technology. There's a lot of people uh, working on that space. We ourselves are, are doing a lot of testing there. Um, but I think it's, it's something that's uh, a technology that's really early on and we'll be watching that very, very closely. Yes, uh, uh, another question we have, uh, as, as some of you may have known, uh, we are promoting a brand, our brand Reprieve Our Ocean uh, at the furniture market. And we have one question saying, would it be possible to make fiber out of 100% ocean source bottles? Yeah, in fact, we, we do that today. Um, you know, what we call our reprieve, our ocean is made from bottles that uh, were collected within 50 kilometers of the ocean um, in parts of the world where there's informal 
uh, collection system. So we know that without us paying more for those bottles, there was a high probability of those bottles going to landfill. And we're able to take 100% of those bottles and turn them into uh, first quality reprieve yarn. They do cost a bit more because of the collection system, um, but yes, it's uh, certainly able to make first quality reprieve yarns. All right. Uh, we also have uh, a question uh, in general, Eddie. What's next for Unify? Well, that's that's a great question. I think um, I think how I'd answer that. We have a, a phrase that we um, we're connecting to reprieve, but it's actually becoming a phrase for our whole company, and that's everything we do is for the good of tomorrow, and that means long term trying to figure out how we can reduce the amount of resources that we use to make our products. Long-term, how we can create innovative products that allow brands and retailers um, create value and, and respond to the consumers. So we know that if, if we have a sustainable footprint because of our pre band that is using 100% recycled raw materials and we make it on equipment that is very, very energy efficient with highly productive workforce, we are literally doing things, making products for the good of tomorrow. And then we also are gonna be part of the solution to increase the recycling rates uh, here in the US. You know, our, We built the bottle washing facility in Reedsville several years ago as a showcase of what could be done here in the US. And we know that we have to be continually part of the solution, not just from an input point of view, but from a manufacturing point of view. You know, We have a solar uh, farm beside our recycling center trying to reduce um, the amount of uh, energy that we had to buy off the grid. So they're the kind of examples that we're continually working on, but innovation um, is a big part of that. And, and it goes hand in hand with creating sustainable products. Thank you. All right, as, the, uh, as, as this session keeps going on, the questions keep popping in. Uh, we have another question here, Eddie. Is is Repree being used to create performance fabrics? Since that is what fits with so many clients' lifestyles. Yeah, um, as we said in the in the talk, you know, it really started with uh, the apparel industry. Um, you know, there are some companies uh, called out Patagonia, for example. We all know them as a, as a standard bearer for sustainability and. You know, they were able to create a movement because they are moving towards having 100% of their product made from recycled material or recyclable material, uh, recycled or recyclable materials. So, yes, um, there are large companies, Nike, Adidas, all who have made commitments to have 50 to 100% of their polyester made from recycled content, where pre fits right into that. And we're working very closely with those brands and those performance brands to give them the recycled content they need, plus the moisture wicking and all the other um, attributes that they want. But we just launched a brand called Chill Sense, which is temperature um, controlled, but also has recycled content. So we try and put innovation and performance alongside a sustainable footprint. All right. Eddie, another question about the process of making uh, recycled polyester or reprieve. Uh, during the process of recycling and, uh, and creating the new material, are there any harmful fumes or harmful chemicals being used uh, that could potentially be harmful for the environment or the workers? No, in fact, I think it's um, much less harmful than using um, you know, some some other virgin products you know we're basically we're taking a bottle as the raw material that's a bottle that we drink um, water out of or sodas out of um and we're you know we're very very pleased with the performance we're able to get we just basically taking that material the bottle we're taking the label off taking the cap off chopping it up and that's the raw material the same raw material that you use to drink liquids out of so it's um no there's there's nothing that comes off uh, that would endanger uh, people or animals. That's what's great about it. I mean, even the fact polyester is a polycondensation reaction. So the actual act of making polyester, the byproduct is water. So that's even virgin polyester, the byproduct is, is water. So that's a unique, another unique attribute of polyester, what makes it great. 
Yes, that, that's a very good point, uh, Eddie, that, that uh, re recycled uh, repre polyester is made from water bottles, uh, which is an FDA approved material. But that also may, you may have already answered our, our next question that popped in is how healthy uh, are these textiles made from recycled polyester? Well, I think for the environment, they're much better because every bottle that we recycle, there's one less pound of virgin raw material being made to make polyester garments. So this is the first year we came out with our sustainability report. And it was the first time we actually declared um, how much reprieve was as part of our sales. And so last year, uh, it was two years ago, it was 25% of our fiber sales. Last year, even though we had a big downturn uh, due to COVID, our fiscal year ends in June, it was 31%. Um, and we'll be announcing next week what the recycling content is for fiber. Um, it'll be higher than what it was uh, the previous year. So we are very excited about the fact we're moving on along this continuum and we're um, just helping the environment become cleaner because we're recycling more bottles. All right. And, and as we know, uh, in the furniture industry, uh, the fabric uh, durability and performance is very key. And so related to that, we do have a question. Uh, it re associated with recycled polyester. Are there any durability issues when using recycled polyester versus virgin? No, that's what's great. We're, we're actually, as we've uh, said, um, you know, you can have all the performance attributes of a virgin product, yet have the additional, excuse me, additional benefit of using a sustainable input. So we have, um, we have unique system in, in the Acumbold um, where we're able to give a very, very consistent product, as consistent as virgin from a diability point of view, from a um, performance point of view, from a tenacity point of view, just like virgin products. And so what we're finding is that a lot of people haven't been aware of the fact they could buy sustainable products, buy reprieve polyester. And once they learn that, then they're saying, well, why would I not buy a recycled material um, if I can still have the same performance attributes as a virgin material. So I, I think a lot of it's, you know, shame on us. A lot of it's about education. Um, you know, many of us at Unify and uh, you included Jay, we we go to schools and we give our little talk and the kids are really, really excited um, to hear that they can do part their part to um, improve the environment. And uh, I just wish we were able to, and, you know, we will get more, uh, people interested. I think one thing that's interesting, I'm going to divert a little bit here, but one thing that's interesting with COVID, um, there was less uh, people shopping in, in physical stores. But what that did encourage people to do was obviously go online. I think everybody on this, this um, presentation can, can relate to that. You sort of go online, but when you go online, you have then time to pause and look at the story that that brand is telling. And so if you're a furniture uh, producer and you've got this brand that has a sustainable story if the consumer is walking by the sofa in a showroom they might just not get the fact it's sustainable but now they're able to actually pause online look at that story read the story you know verify the authenticity of it and then whether they go back into the, the store the physical store to buy it or buy it online they know they have a certified recycled product when they're buying reprieve. So I think the consumer is, is, is a lot smarter than we give credit for, and they are looking for that sustainable story. And the online uh, process gives them time to actually verify that and feel, feel good about their, their acquisition. All right. Also, Eddie, uh, does Unify Recycle uh, other PE, other PET products, not just bottles. Yes, well, um, we did start out recycling our own waste, and um, once we we did that, we moved on to bottles. And then, as you saw on that loop to loop uh, video, uh, we actually recycled textile waste. So our goal is ultimately to be the solution provider for recycling all waste. So we we are going to be investing in some technology that allow us to recycle, first of all, scrap waste. Um, from the manufacturing uh, process. But then after that, we would also uh, be very willing to, to uh, recycle um, garments um, that are 100% polyester, or even if we had 
any kind of uh, furniture, fabrics, or pillows or cushions that are 100% polyester, we believe we will be able to recycle that in the future. Um, it is a technology that's, um, it does require some work. There is issues around collections. If you think about bottles, they're, you know, you throw it in your recycling bin. In some states, you pay deposits, you get that money back. And if it's on the curbside, the bottle comes to, to unify. Um, collecting uh, of fabrics, garments, and um, furniture components um, that have been de de deconstructed is a little more tricky. But I think it's going to be an expectation. Um, as we said, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's, it's when. So if you design for recyclability and design for ease of deconstruction uh, at the end of life, um, we're going to have a lot more material that we'll be able to, to process. Thank you. Great. That's all the time we have allotted for the Q&A section today. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. And uh, we will work with the furniture market and try to get uh, any question that we weren't able to answer today uh, answered for you. Yeah, and just one last thing. I want to um, say thank you again for recycling. Give a shout out to all those who, like I said, make that extra step to put that bottle back into the recycling bin. And then for those of you who've been inspired and have are begin to think a little bit more about uh, sustainability, uh, any effort you can to create a more sustainable product that you're involved in would be greatly appreciated for the good of tomorrow. Thanks.